Hi, my name is Nick. I'm a student at Purdue University in the School of Electrical Engineering. And today I'm going to be talking about simulating anisoplanetic turbulence by sampling intermodal and spatially correlated Zernike coefficients. First, we'd like to begin with addressing why a turbulence simulator is needed. One motivating factor is the use in evaluating reconstruction methods in order to have some ground truth to compare against. In addition, generating data for deep learning approaches is needed, and as most approaches true to the theory are slow, we'd like something a bit faster. Some methods compromise accuracy for speed in order to meet this need, and therefore the desire of fast but accurate simulators is in high demand. The goal of this work is to design a fast, open source, and accurate atmospheric turbulence simulator. This is achieved through a realization of the approximate equivalence of two bodies of work, which allows us to reduce the problem to a sampling problem. So to begin, let's take a look at the background and then related work. We are primarily concerned with what happens as light propagates through the atmosphere. In a vacuum, a pulse of light will originate at the source and spherically propagate outwards until it eventually lands on our aperture in red. Since we are typically talking about long ranges in this work, as is the case with most turbulence works, we can consider the wave to arrive at our aperture roughly flat. In a vacuum, we then have no phase distortions and get a resulting diffraction point spread function. When we introduce randomness into the atmosphere, we get random pockets of different indices of refraction, which will cause distortions in our wave. An easy way to visualize this is to divide the atmosphere into chunks and let the wave propagate through, becoming dented by the representative phase screens. When it eventually arrives at our aperture, what would have been flat is now dented up and distorted and produces a point spread function, something like what we have shown. There are two principal effects here, blur and something we highlight with the red arrow, tilt. Another convenient thing about the phase screen perspective is our spatial correlation with another light source is straightforward as they will share overlapping portions of the screens. Now we'd like to put our approach into context. The phase screen approach is the most commonly used in practice, referred to as split step propagation as it goes back and forth between phase imparting and free space propagation, thus splitting the steps. A difficulty here is that it is computationally expensive. We'll have to take as many forward and inverse Fourier transform pairs as there are phase screens, which is typically around 10. Furthermore, we'll have to do this for roughly every pixel in the image. Propagation-free methods also exist and primarily focus on the tilt effects and impart some spatially invariant blur. While these are fast, they are not necessarily accurate to the theory, specifically with respect to the blurring effects. Other approaches include geometric optics perspectives, such as ray tracing, or empirically driven methods such as sparse representation. This work fits somewhere in between split-step propagation and propagation-free methods. Now onto our method. For our approach, we like to collapse the phase screens using the thin screen model and get directly to the phase in order to avoid the Fourier transforms. Doing away with the phase screens, however, leaves us with a bit of difficulty in evaluating their spatial correlation. We use a set of basis functions known as the Zernike polynomials, as suggested by Knoll in 1976, to represent the random wavefronts. Knoll derives the statistics for the coefficients from a single point source as a function of turbulence parameters. The Zernike polyno polynomials also have a bit of interpretation. For instance, the two bases sitting above the red line represent tilt, or approximately the shifting in the image. The others below the line all contribute to the blur. When considering a second point source, the correlation becomes difficult as a function of their angles of arrival. The correlations of the bases above the line are known, but not those below. By using the Zernike polynomials, we introduce another type of correlation intermodal. That is, what is the correlation between two coefficients from the same point source? Luckily, Null has already taken care of this. Therefore, we'd like to include both types of correlations in our simulator, intermodal and spatial. What we do is to consider the following situation. 
Say we have two areas we'd like to generate random wavefronts for, shown in blue and yellow. If they were close, we'd like them to be similar, and if they were far away, then different. We can describe this by the angle between them, the angle of arrival. But as we mentioned, this isn't known how to evaluate. What we then do is to strip away everything except for the wavefronts and put them in the following configuration. We then pretend instead that they are two wavefronts arriving at two different cameras, observing one point source and separated by some vector. It turns out that if we write out the integrations and assume a constant turbulent strength over the path, as well as use a first order approximation, the two correlations are proportional to one another. The link is then established between the angle of arrival correlations from Basu and multi-aperture correlations from Shannon. We may then define the normalized spatial correlation matrices. As explained in Shannon's work, we can then write the correlation of the tilt terms as the following convenient expression, with minus corresponding to horizontal and plus corresponding to vertical. In order to generate the tilts, we notice these are the, uh, the autocorrelation matrices of the Zernike coefficients 2 and 3, and due to wide sense stationarity, can generate tilts quickly using the power spectral density and multiplication with white noise. Another advantage in establishing such a link is that multi-aperture correlations for all Zernike coefficients are known how to evaluate as a result of Takato. We then plot the spatial correlations as a function of separations and find, as did Takato, the following behavior. That is, the high order coefficients, those corresponding to the blur, have a very short correlation range, while the tilt co coefficients have almost global correlation. We then make the following approximation. For the blur terms, we segment the image into blocks and use only one PSF for the entire block and maintain the tilt having its global dependence. To illustrate the process of simulation, we first take a ground truth image and generate tilt wavefronts, which are correlated across the image. This produces an image that is sharp, but distorted by random pixel shifting. We then take this image and segment it into chunks and blur each block independently in order to produce the final image. Now onto our experiments. One set of experiments is to compare with real data from the NATO dataset with known propagation parameters. Ignoring contrast, we see a great deal of similarity in the amount of blur and warping present in both images. Furthermore, we can compare our tilts to a propagation-free method and their chosen parameters. Again, we seem to observe a loose sense of similarity. However, we'd like to motivate that these comparisons alone are not convincing and that we have known statistics to compare to. Therefore, the next two experiments we find much more informative. The first experiment we perform is the spatial tilt statistics as a function of pixel separation. Between our approach, the multi-aperture correlations, and the angle of arrival correlations, we find a considerable match in both the tilt correlation and their differential tilt variance. The next experiment is comparing the temporal behavior of our generated PSFs with the theory. We can average over the PSFs and obtain the empirical long exposure PSF, as well as average over the centered point spread functions in order to obtain the empirical short exposure PSF. We again find the match between simulation and theory. To summarize, a propagation-free simulator with correspondence to the known statistics is proposed. In addition, a way to evaluate these spatial correlations is introduced through an equivalence between angle of arrival and multi-aperture. We expect this to be useful in the generation of large amounts of training data and the standardization of evaluation of reconstruction methods. Thank you.